Welcome to another sermon from New Bethel Baptist Church. I hope that this sermon will help you to better know who God is, challenge you to grow in your faith, and compel you to go and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Um, we'll move on to what our, our sermon title is today. If you have your Bibles, you want to turn to 1 Corinthians. Uh, today we're looking at God's will for your health. We've been going through this series, What is God's Will for Me? And it's a little bit more of a topical series, a little different from what we, we normally do. Um, and, and so today's a little bit of a different message. We're going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 6, um, verse, starting in verse 12. Um, it's a little bit of a different message. And this is not a, a, a message that's really easy for me as we look at this. Uh, because I, I never will and never have presumed to be perfect in any area that we discuss. But as we look at this, this is one area that I, I wanted to make sure we talked about because I think it's ignored in the church largely. And I think it's an area that is not ignored in Scripture, but it's ignored largely, especially in the American church. And, and it's an issue, I think, severely in the American church. And so I don't presume to be perfect in any area that I speak on or preach from. You know, I'm, I am a person that is redeemed by Christ, hoping to share the truth of Christ, not claiming to be perfected by it. But this is obviously an area in my life that I've, I've struggled with and not perfect in. And so it's for that reason uh, I, I want to make sure we don't ignore this subject. I don't know that I've ever heard in church a sermon or even any sort of Bible study directed at this topic, which Scripture is not silent on and talks about. Um, so I want you to understand that I'm preaching as much to myself today as I am to you. Uh, and so, and through my preparation of the content of this sermon, it's been very convicting to me in my life, personally. And so the verses we're about to read in 1 Corinthians, they don't specifically talk about, and they're not really about health. It's kind of a bookend, it's, two, it's a couple of verses that bookend a passage where he really directly addresses sexual immorality. But the idea about what we do with our body and our body honoring God, the principles there, I think, directly relate uh, and then as we get into the more specific aspects of what God's will for your health is, we're going to look at those passages a little more directly. But this mindset that we see here, I think, is very important as we go forward into this. Because I think this, the principle and the mindset, he, Paul, in 1 Corinthians, talks about sexual immorality with, but I think they also apply very well to how we pursue health in our life. So starting in verse 12, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. And then going down to verse 19 and 20, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God with your body. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you for this time that you've given us to come together to look at what your word says to us, Lord, even when it's uncomfortable. God, I pray that today will be a day where you are glorified and honored through what we talk about and that we will just seek to grow and to know you more through this. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so again, like I will say, I want to be very clear about this. What he talks about between those verses about how the body is not meant for sexual immorality, but I think in that sense of how we honor God in our bodies, we, have to, we can also take that mindset of how we should honor God in our body about how we are healthy in it. Now here's the deal. I want to start this with the answer. What is God's will for your health? God wants you to be healthy and productive in your life. He wants you to be healthy and productive throughout your life. That's the answer to the, to the, to the statement. God does care about your health. He wants you to be healthy, and He wants you to be productive to live an active life that is serving Him. Now, I want to be very clear, this is not a salvation issue, as most issues that we talk about are not a salvation issue. Or, and it's not even the highest end for a Christian, but it does have some value. As 1 Timothy 4.8 says, For the training of the body has limited benefit, but godliness is beneficial in every way, since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. And so we, we see this idea about how bodily training, physical training, has some value, but it's not as good as godliness. The issue becomes when we talk about what the Bible says about our health and the way we interact with health, is that there are a lot of places where things become a sin issue when it relates to way, the way we deal with our body and with our health. And so throughout this sermon, as we talk about this, we're going to use the example of a car 
to compare to our health. This is not a sermon that is going to be focused on how you can be the healthiest person ever, give you advice on how to be healthy, but more looking at what the Bible says about it and how that applies to us today. So as we look at this idea of a car, if you bought a brand new car, presumably you want to take care of it. You keep gas in it, you maintain it, you do what you need to do to make sure this car operates and works for as long as possible. And despite your best efforts, one day that car will fail you. However, the better you take care of it, the longer that car is going to last. And so when we look at our bodies, we've, been, we've all been given a body, and some of us have, have bodies that have problems from, from the get-go, just as some cars do, but we, we have, some of us have some gifts, some have some abilities, some have others. But the better we take care of ourselves, the, the better we run for longer, the more we're able to do things for longer. And in the same way, if you neglect a car, the sooner it will face problems. If we neglect our bodies, the sooner we will face problems. And there are places where that neglect of our body becomes sinful. As we've talked about God's will for your life, much of what God's will for us, or the things we're talking about, deal with stewardship, how we take care of what we've been trusted with. And so we've been given one body, one physical body, and how are we taking care of what's been trusted with? In the Bible, there are several sin issues relating to our health. And so we're going to look at a couple of those today. The first one is gluttony. Gluttony is an issue that is talked about quite frequently in the Bible. And most often, it is paired with drunkenness. And we often in the church very, take drunkenness very seriously. But often we don't talk as much about gluttony. So to be clear, gluttony is the word used for excessive eating, eating too much. And America in general has a gluttony problem. By 2007, the CDC listed obesity as the number one health concern in America. And it's been said that gluttony is the most ignored and accepted sin in the church. The CDC again lists four major chronic lifestyle issue, risks for chronic disease. Tobacco use, poor nutrition, lack of physical activity, and excessive alcohol use. Now, I don't know about you, but growing up in church, I've heard of two of those things, and I've heard two of those things ignored. I've heard a lot about how we should not smoke and how that's harmful for our health, and we shouldn't do that if we want to honor God with our bodies. We've, you've heard the same scripture, your, your body's a temple. Why would you do something so harmful to your body? I've heard, we've, talk, we've heard talk about alcohol, and, and while alcohol is not a sin in of itself, drunkenness is, and we heard talk about that throughout our lives growing up. We don't, you shouldn't be drunk, and, and it's even wise to avoid alcohol if, if it's going to be a problem for you. But the Bible does say a lot about those other two things, about physical, lack of physical activity and gluttony. And we're going to talk about those. The first one talking about gluttony. And so many of the passages the Bible talks about are in Proverbs. And I just want to look at one of them, Proverbs 23, 20 through 21. Don't associate with those who drink too much wine or those who gorge themselves on meat. For the drunkard and the glutton will become poor and grogginess will clothe them in rags. And like I said, in Scripture, gluttony and drunkenness are often talked about hand in hand. Why? Because both of them are a self-control issue of taking something that is too much and it becomes harmful for you. And they are similar, but very, they're also slightly different. Because alcohol, while not a sin, and drunkenness is, alcohol, alcohol is not necessary to live, uh, necessary to life. So you can avoid drunkenness. By, by avoiding alcohol altogether. And, and I would say that's a wise thing to do. I don't think there's any reason to imbibe in alcohol if you can avoid it. It's not sinful, but it's, it's, it's a good thing to avoid. And you can avoid it. Your life's not going to be worse if you avoid alcohol. But eating food is not a sin, but gluttony is. But food is necessary to life. You can't just stop eating. And so it, can, it, can, it cannot be avoided to avoid sinful indulgence. And if we were going to look at that car analogy, gluttony would be just continuing to overfill a gas tank when it's full. The difference between a car and a person is that when we overfill ourselves, we accumulate it as fat. And so there's different types of gluttony I think that we can, we can find. And in America, I think one of those common types we see is what you might call accidental gluttony. Not that it excuses or makes it okay, but if, you've ever, if you remember the movie that, or the documentary that came out, Super Size Me, do you remember that documentary that came out? Where this guy went around and for 30 days, he was a very healthy, conscious guy. For 30 days, he only ate at McDonald's. And every time they asked him to supersize a meal, he would do it. And he had to eat everything on the menu at least once, and he did it for 30 days. He almost like, killed himself doing this. He, he almost became diabetic. He, al- he gained a ton of weight just eating three meals a day at McDonald's. 
eating everything on the menu, supersizing it whenever they ask. It's actually why you're not able to supersize anymore. Because of that documentary, they took that away. The problem is, it's really easy. Drive through, get breakfast. Drive through, get lunch. Drive through, get dinner. You're ordering a meal. That should be a normal portion, but it's very easy to overeat in America because of the food that we're eating. To continue to look at this alcohol example, if someone were to drink a very strong alcoholic drink or a very weak alcoholic drink, the strong one takes less to get drunk. And so when you eat really calorically dense food, really unhealthy food, it takes less to be gluttonous because you're eating more than you need much quicker in that situation. And so we, when we think about this, we should probably consider the quality of the food we're eating as much as the quantity that we're eating. The second problem that we see here is this idea of being um, mastered by food. Being mastered by food. This is the more traditional gluttonous idea we see in Scripture. This idea of letting f- almost being addicted to food and going after it all the time. When, when, you're, when you're stressed, you go eat food. Just like the person that's a drunk, when they're stressed, they go drink. The glutton eats food. And it leads to an unhealthy life. Because we remember this idea we talked about. Everything's permissible for me. Not everything's beneficial. Everything's permissible for me. But I will not be mastered by anything. Gluttony is the sin of being mastered by your food. Because the accidental glutton that is not mastered by their food, when they realize, oh, these decisions are really bad for my health, I'm going to change it. The, the one that is mastered by their food has struggles with it more. It's a difficult change in their life. Now, I want to I be clear here about something. There's a difference between being gluttonous and feasting. The Bible is clear. There are times to celebrate and enjoy a lot of good food, even unhealthy food at times. Your birthday, go eat your favorite dinner and have a good cake. You may eat too much that day. But it doesn't happen again and again and again and again. That's the problem that we see that happens. We also see something in the American church. That it's kind of strange when you look at Scripture. Fasting is talked a lot about in the Bible. But do you know every time the, the fasting gets brought up, every time this idea gets brought up, I, I hear people kind of qualify. It doesn't have to be food. There are only a few circumstances, health-related, that I could think that we shouldn't consider fasting from food if we feel compelled to try to grow in our relationship with God. If someone has, a, has a, maybe diabetes, uh, an issue where if they don't eat food, they're going to go into a, a, a bad issue with their blood sugar, that's, that's a different situation. But most Christians should be able, if they felt compelled by God, to grow in their relationship with God, to fast from food. It shouldn't have that mastery over us. And so we should have seasons in our life of feasting and of fasting, but largely we should not be mastered by our food. We should live a healthy life in our relationship to food. And so why does this matter? It's a sin issue. Gluttony is a sin. Just like all the other things we talk about, gluttony is sinful. It also contributes negatively to our life. It contributes to obesity, which will impact the length and the quality of your life. It impacts your ability to serve God, both in length of service and quality of service. And here's where I just want to be honest with you. This is why this is convicting to me, because if you look at BMI, I don't think I'll ever be in the normal range. I'm short. We all know that. We make fun of it. It's okay. Short people are are skewed on that, and and I, I do lift. I have muscle. I'd have to weigh... What, I, don't, I would have to lay less than I weighed in seventh grade to be in the normal range. But I'm definitely obese. That's a reality. And be honest about that. That's something I've struggled with in my life. And here's the reality is that even at 28 years old, there are things I can't do today I did a few years ago. It's more difficult for me to do things now than it was a few years ago as I've gained a little bit of weight. And so if you look at your life as that accumulates for years and years and years, here's what I'm heading for. Heart disease. I'm heading for knee replacements at a much younger age than if I would have. Because here's the thing, your body's going to give out at some point. But the better you take care of it, the less likely those things are to happen at an early age, the less frequently those things are to happen. I have to acknowledge that in my life. The second aspect of this process, because there's two things, it goes just like you overfill your car, what, what, how, how much do you drive your car? And that, that one would be called sloth. Sloth or, or laziness or not doing things. So Proverbs 24, 30 through 34 says this, I went by the field of a slacker and by the vineyard of one lacking sense. Thistles had come up everywhere, weeds covered the ground, and the stone wall was ruined. I saw and took it to heart. I looked and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the arms to rest, and your poverty will come like a robber, 
and your need like a bandit. So the Bible is also very clear about this, this idea of, of not doing, of being lazy, as it were, to be. Now, here's the deal. I think, again, with this, it's a sin issue, but it's also one that can happen without intention in America. Jobs have gone from working in the fields to sitting behind a desk. You don't get as many steps as you used to. You don't do as many physical things on purpose, and so it's easier to not go as far. You think about how much, if you were to drive your car every single week the same, the same way, you had to drive it 300 miles, say, so you had to put the same amount of gas in every single week. Let's assume it's all, it all costs the same, right? It doesn't, but um, you had to drive it the same amount. You stop driving as far. You drive 150 miles. If you put the same amount of gas in, you're going to have a problem. This is largely what happened in my life. I grew up playing sports every single day, two hours of practice, lifting during the, during the school day in my weightlifting class, one hour weightlifting, three hours of activity every single day outside of anything else I wanted to do. I could eat whatever I wanted. I get to college. I don't do those things. I take naps between classes. I don't go to the gym. And I eat whatever I want. There's a problem. So this is part of the issue that we have to face here is that it's not just how much and what you eat, it's also how much and what you move. So if you want to eat more, if you move more, that, that can help offset those things. We also see the issue not just of that, but the neglect of your abilities. This comes into how you serve God. One of the, if you, if you neglect servicing your ve- one aspect of your vehicle, maybe you take it in to get maintained, but you say, I never want to rotate the tires. What's going to eventually happen? I never want to change the tires. They're going to blow out. The rest of your car might be working fine, but that's going to be a problem. One of the fascinating things that I've, have, I've had happen, is I've, as I've been in churches and talked to people, there's a very common injury that happens in a very common way. Very, there are very many men I've met that have torn their Achilles tendon playing church league softball. It's a, it's a very common, there, there seems to be a correlation there. Um, why does this happen? It's not because men in their 40s can't play church league softball. I, I firmly believe this. It's not because of that. It's because they once played and had acti- activity in their life, stopped doing that thing for a long time, and tried to do it like they once did. I want you to think about what happens when, when you go to, to an athletic event. If you're part of a sport, you stretch for at least 15 minutes before you play a sport. You warm up, right? When, when we would pitch coming out of the offseason, we didn't get straight onto a mound. We would throw normally. We would start to get our arms back into shape before we ever stopped, stepped onto a mound. Why? Because you step onto a mound without getting ready, you injure yourself. And so when you think about your life, you think about how to take care of your body, there is a point to which you have to maintain the gifts and abilities God's given you, or you're going to lose them. If you want to be able to serve God throughout your life, and to do the things you once did for longer, you have to maintain those things. So if you want to be a person that gets on the ground and plays with kids, guess what you're going to have to do between Sundays? Find ways where you're doing things that mimic getting on the ground and playing with kids, or eventually you'll stop being able to. I, 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 once heard, I always hear people, because I like to lift, they always say, Don't, aren't you worried when you squat you're going to hurt your knees, you're going to hurt your back? I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about losing the ability to squat as I get older, because that's what happens. The other thing with sloth is it contributes to gluttony because the less you move, the easier it is to be gluttonous. And so, why does this matter? Again, it's a sin issue. If we are lazy, if we are slackers, as the Bible calls it, it's sinful. If we don't do things for the sake of not doing them, it's sinful. It impacts the quality and length of your life, and and you lose your ability to serve at a younger age. And I want to take one moment and look at the last part of this sinful equation, I think, and, and go the other direction. There's the, also the, the reality that your health can be dealing with idolatry in your life. And there are people I've seen go from one extreme to the other, where food is an idol in their life. They have an issue with that, and they, they lose weight, get healthy, and then food and their health becomes an idol. They're afraid to eat certain foods because they're afraid of what it will do to them. There are people, you know, <laughs> look on the Internet. There are people that make their health and their body, their entire career. It's an idol. And so just as it can be sinful in one direction, it can be sinful in the other direction. And probably in a more uh, specific way is the things that we do can become idolatrous in our lives. I've mentioned before baseball at one point in my life was an idol because it was healthy, it was great, it helped me to live a healthy life, but I was chasing after that more than I was chasing after serving God. And it wasn't until I was, that was taken from me that I realized that 
in my life. Living a healthy life should not be an end in and of itself. It should be something that serves God. It should be something that is serving God and your ability to serve God. And it should, it should be all to His glory. Colossians 3.17 says this, Whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. And so why, why does all of this matter? Why, do, why are we talking about this? Because your health matters because it matters to God. It is a sin issue and an obedience issue. This is why when I, when I started to think about this, I, I, I didn't want to skip it. And when I started to get closer to it, here's the deal. I could have changed this sermon as soon as this week, as early as this week, because I didn't want to talk about it. It's embarrassing for me to talk about it, to realize and to recognize that in my life, that I, I need to work on this and to get better at this. But it's something that I need to do better at. It's something that a lot of Christians in America need to do better at. The, the sad reality is that if, I think the obesity rate in America is the highest in the world. I think it's like, I don't, I don't want to quote a statistic, I'm, I'm wrong, but it's, it's well in the, close to 50%. It's getting there. Especially those that are overweight and obese, it's getting there. I think it's higher in the church. There's some statistics that suggest that in the church, it's higher than in the, the regular population. Here's the problem I want us to see. Can you imagine if the church had a higher percentage of alcoholics than the general population? We'd have a problem with that. Can you imagine if the church had a higher percentage of adulterers than the general population? We'd have a problem with that. And those things exist within the church, and we, 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 we try to correct people and love them and bring them to where they ought to be, but we don't talk about this in the same way. The reality is, is that the church should, should be a Christ-like example to the world. We should be obedient to God through this. And the other reality is it helps you to live a longer and healthier life with fruitful service to the Lord. I know I need to work on this so that I can continue to do things later into my life. I want to be able to be a pastor late into my life. I don't want my health to be this factor that holds me back. And so the goal in this, what is the goal? The goal is to live a healthy life, to eat a reasonable amount of food, eat quality food that fuels your body. That's what it's there for. Feast when appropriate. Enjoy it when appropriate. It's a gift from God, but it's not something to indulge in or be mastered by. Fast when appropriate for spiritual purposes and for dependence on God rather than on food. Live an active life. Find something you enjoy doing that you can do. I think my great-grandmother, she lived to be 103 years old. So maybe that's something we could... She walked two miles every day into her 90s. because She liked to do it. Find something you enjoy doing and do that. Nurture and take care of the abilities that you have for the time, so that they will last. Serve God with your physicality. And do all of this to God's glory, not as an end in itself. Here's the deal. The goal is not to be supreme athletes. The goal is not to be uh, star athletes, have the best physique, have the best whatever. The goal is to honor God in the way we live our life. And that means in how we eat. That means in how we move. That means in how we do all of these things together. In all of this, I want to remind you the idea of what we started with at the end of this passage. Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought at a price. So glorify God with your body. The reason I'm talking about this, the reason this matters to us is that we are not our own. That what we do in this life, we do to try to follow God, to obey God, to be thankful to Him for what He's done for us because we have been purchased with a price. And so we have to live as though we understand the price that's been paid for us. Jesus Christ, while we were far from God, while we were lost in our sin, whatever sin it was, whether it was gluttony, idolatry, all of these things that, that exist that we all have struggled with in various ways and at various capacities, Jesus Christ came while we were in those things. He died on the cross so that we could be forgiven from our sins, so that we could have a way to be made right with God. Not so that we could continue to live in sin and to gratify the desires of our flesh, not so that we can continue to, to chase after the things that, that we once did, but so that we could live a life that is in pursuit of Him, being conformed into His likeness, renewed in our thinking, chasing after God. 
And so as the church, as the body of Christ, we should continually begin to look more and more like Christ in the way we live our life. And, and so the challenge today is, is if you don't know Jesus, if, you, if you've never understood the price that was paid for you, if you've never said, I know that I sin, and maybe it's this, maybe it's other things, I know I'm separated from God because of that sin, I, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me, and I want to make him my Lord and Savior. I want to be forgiven for what I've done. I want to have a relationship with him. I'm not perfect now. I never will be until he perfects me in glory. But I want to be forgiven. I want to have a relationship with God. If that's you today, if you've never made that decision to follow Christ, that's the first step, is to have a relationship with Jesus. And we're going to have a time of invitation in a few moments where you can do that, where you can respond to what God's doing in your life. But if you've done that before, if you're, if you're a person that say, I have a relationship with God, I've been following Him for years of my life, but I look at my life and, and I realize that this is an area I haven't been obedient in. And that's, that's where I'm at today. I'm going I'm to explain to you what this looks like. When I challenge you every sermon, what do you do? This is me saying, I'm convicted by this. This is something that's been a, a sin in my life I've got to get rid of. I've got to find a way to get healthier, to serve God better, to be obedient in, in what He calls me to do. And so I want to make that change in my life. And I hope that you will help hold me accountable in that as I try to live a life that's more glorifying to God. Not because I have to, have, uh, to look a certain way or do certain things, but because I want to be obedient to God. I want to be conformed to His likeness. And so in your life, whether it's this sermon, whether it's any other sermon, look at your life. And maybe you don't do it publicly like I just did, but to find somebody to say, I was convicted today, I want to follow and be obedient. Now, will you help me? I've been struggling with this. Maybe you didn't even know that. I've been struggling with this. Will you help me? That's what it looks like to respond to what God's doing in your life. That's why the altar's open so you can come and pray and others can pray for you, pray with you. You can turn to your neighbor, you can pray as well. So as you look at your life, what is it that God is calling you to do? Do you need to trust Him for the very first time? Do you have questions about what it means to do that? I'll be down front, I would love to talk to you. Do you need to be obedient in your life in this aspect of, of how, what God's will for your health is in your life? Whatever it is, I would challenge you to be obedient to him today. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would be with us this morning, that you would just move, uh, move among us, that you would help us to just be obedient to whatever your will is in our life. Lord, if anyone does not know you today, I pray that today would be the day they turn to you for salvation. They, they look at the sin in their life and they, they ask you to forgive them for that sin. They make you your, the, the Lord and Savior of their life, responding to what you've already done for them. And God, I pray for, for us in here, Lord, that, that those who are convicted by this, that, that you would help us to be obedient in our lives, to look at, at the way that we live, the things that we eat, the way that we move, the things that we do, if it's glorifying to you or not, and how we can pursue you in that. I pray that we would hold one another accountable as we pursue you in, in view of, of being a Christian that is healthy, the, a Christian that is seeking to be uh, transformed by you, to be renewed by you, to be holy like you are holy that we would not be mastered by anything, but we would live as though we've been purchased with a price. I pray that you would move among us in, in Jesus' name. Amen. We hope this sermon has been a blessing to you today. If you have any questions about what you've heard, we would love to hear from you through our church Facebook page, email, or by calling the church office.